And on, on the uh, what was the message from the Victorian election as far as the Greens are concerned? I mean, this is a suggestion that, that maybe their vote has levelled out, um, that it, it, it did improve slightly nevertheless. Uh, here's Bob Brown. Like Kermit said, being green isn't, isn't necessarily easy because we've had a lot thrown at us in this election campaign. But, look, the disappointment was there because they didn't get the preferences and therefore didn't win seats. Um, but you still get the sense that maybe... The, I'm not suggesting that, they, that they, um, they can't go on being a successful party for a long time, but the vote might have peaked. Well, it, I think preferencing always affects the Greens. I think the interesting thing in the federal arena is that everyone's focusing on the threat the Greens pose to Labor, and undoubtedly they do, and we've all talked about that. No one's really focused on the threat Labor potentially poses to the Greens, which is if Labor manages to co-opt the more politically palatable, the more mainstream elements of the Greens' agenda, particularly doing something on climate change, then that poses quite a big threat to the Greens potentially and that's what happened in the early days with the Greens in Germany and the SPD there. They sort of co-opted part of the Greens agenda and then they didn't really have that appeal to the mainstream anymore. So I think there's also, you know, I think the threat goes both ways. But with the, uh, the climate change, you know, the, the big sticking points of what, at, at what rate do you, do you uh, mm. or what price do you put on carbon and they're miles apart on that and on compensation to industry. Absolutely. And I think this game of bluff is going to be one of the most fascinating things about next year because, in my assessment, both the Greens and Labor need something to come out, to, out of this. I don't think either of them can go back to the voters with nothing again. Mm. But they had irreconcilable differences last time, so they need to each need to kind of own the outcome. So at the starting point, they are starting miles apart. They've put aside the argument about targets, but that argument's going to be had by proxy when they start talking about what the price is, because once you've got the price, you can figure out what target it's going to get to. And they're miles apart on that. And now they're doing this positioning on whether, say, electricity generators should get any compensation at all. The Greens say no, nothing. That's not Labor's position. So I think how that negotiation goes through next year is going to be really interesting and really critical for both of them.